I can't even remember the last time I honestly had a self-care day. I also think I have a very different mindset about self-care days. I somehow am completely done with all of my work and everything and I'm really caught up way ahead of stuff. So today I get to like do nothing. <laughs> I also like structure, so we're gonna actually write out today's plan. But it'll be a surprise to you guys as you keep watching the video. <laughs> Throughout this video, I want to talk a little bit about real self-care with you guys and what that means because I feel like self-care and self-love gets so prioritized and over-glamorized on social media and while I do think it's always nice to take a day to just relax or take a bath or a long shower like I'm kind of doing in this video, I want to talk about what real self-care and self-love is because self-care is more than a mask, a good nap, or a bath. Self-care is putting in work for yourself staying on top of things that you need to do chores around the house going to the gym taking care of your body watching what you put in your body taking care of your skin and your hair taking care of the people around you that's like real self-care but a self-care day can be fun but i feel like that is more of like just a fun day than a self-care day um also i'm just gonna be kind of cleaning off my desk because like i said self-care can be chores so although I call this a self-care day, this is really just more of a relaxing day because real self-care cannot be accomplished in simply one day. It is a day-by-day -day thing and honestly, it's building habits. So I'm gonna talk about that in this video. It's now time to take out my dreadlocks for now because I'm getting my hair done soon and I wanna do like a little Olaplex treatment and stuff and get a good hair wash in before my appointment. I'll probably put them back in soon though because I really, really love them. This is going to take a while, so let's get started. I think the best way to go about this will be to just kind of start at the top and work my way through. So some people might think of self-care and think, oh, I am gonna, you know, start a diet or I'm going to have a couple drinks or I'm going to be really harsh on myself to motivate myself and I'm gonna say yes to everyone so I can be a nicer person or forcing yourself to overwork out to punish yourself for something bad that you ate. But real self-care is taking that day-to-day -to, -day to change your life and your habits. So learning how to fuel your body with, with food and not be a addicted to it, eating too much or too little, and paying attention to those foods, but having balance. Real self-care is drinking lots of water every day, saying kind things to yourself, setting boundaries with people, spending time with people who improve you and enrich your life, moving your body because you want to be healthy and feel good, doing those things that will make you a better person in the long run. That's like real self-care. And like I talked about in my morning routine video is you cannot do everything at once. If you really want to love yourself and have self-care, you have to just implement one thing at a time. So spend a week working on one aspect of your life to improve yourself because you're either going to become 1% better every day or you're going to become 1% worse every day. It's a daily commitment to bettering yourself. And I think my best advice is honestly learning balance. I think most everything is good or at least fine within moderation and finding balance has completely changed my life <laughs> okay i got like half of it out i'm like should i do a little <laughs> look like a cave woman this is just reminding me how short my hair actually is after i wash it obviously it won't look like this but i'm like should i do a little half half and half if my hair was actually long maybe i could i did it in like october but i literally would just wear this part like up the whole time so yeah, I think we're just gonna take them all out. But balance and moderation are so important because some things, if you do way too much of it, can be bad for you. But also some things, if you don't do enough of it, can be bad for you. So once again, moderation and balance are so good to try to implement into your life and literally every single aspect. The next little topic I kind of want to touch on is the concept of self-love and what that really means because I feel like self-love isn't really the right word. I feel like we should be promoting self-acceptance and I think the way that self-love has been kind of pushed out on social media can be a little bit toxic but this might be a hot take so buckle up. Okay here's my hair. She's so cute. 
It smells like the pool because I haven't washed it since getting in the pool yesterday. All right, well, she definitely needs like a nice Olaplex treatment and deep conditioner, so that's next on the agenda. So I'm starting off with the Olaplex number zero, and then I'm gonna follow it up with the Olaplex number three, which both go in your hair and sit for about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna shower and do the Olaplex shampoo, purple shampoo, and then the Olaplex deep treatment, which I think is number eight. And then at the end, I will finish out the Olaplex line. The reason I don't like how self-love is pushed out right now is because it's all about like, love every part of yourself, focus on loving yourself, you should love yourself first before anything else. And I think there's a difference between taking care of yourself and this idea of like self-love, which I think has turned into self-obsession. I think self-acceptance is a much better word because you can accept everything about yourself, but I don't think you have to love everything about yourself. In fact, think about other people. You don't love everything about everyone around you or even about one person even like the love of your life like you don't necessarily have to love every single thing about them like there's gonna be things that kind of annoy you because it's a different person and I think the same goes for ourselves this is definitely reminding me just how thick my hair is I'm just gonna put my hair up in a little claw clip and then I'm gonna do my Bible study for the day and my journaling. But continuing with my thought, I think whenever you're so focused on loving every part of yourself, it honestly kind of makes you hate yourself more. And you're just overthinking all these little things about yourself because you're like, oh, I need to learn to love this about myself. It's like, honestly, I disagree with that. I think you should learn to accept everything about yourself but even then i think there are some things that you don't necessarily have to accept about yourself in fact you could work on changing about yourself because i don't think you just have to be like this is the way that i am i really think you can change everything about yourself if you really wanted to and as far as like physical things go that's like a different aspect i'm kind of thinking more like emotional and stuff like that physical i don't think you have to love but i think that you need to work on acceptance well i think real self-love is it's focusing on improving yourself not just being okay with where you're at i think to get that real self-love you have to focus on other people lifting up the people around you learning from the people around you bettering and pushing the people around you serving the people around you i think the more you focus on others you don't really care about yourself anymore and not in a bad way it's just like oh the world doesn't revolve around me. Oh, I don't have to love the way I look every day. My outfit doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to be materialistic and look a certain way to love myself. I can look exactly how I look. That's cool, whatever. I'm just gonna focus on helping other people around me. So I feel like when you actually take yourself out of the spotlight, it helps you to love yourself more because you're not so self-obsessed. And like I said, I'm a huge believer in balance. So I think there has to be a really good balance of, okay, I actually don't really matter. I don't really care about myself. I don't care what I look like. And pairing that with, I should also try to be improving myself and do things to take care of myself. Okay, now we're gonna take it a little bit deeper because the definition of love for me is doing what's absolute best for someone because you genuinely care about them and what happens to them and sometimes that is being super harsh with someone sometimes it might be offending someone because it's what they need to hear and it can be really hard to genuinely love someone as an action and not just like an emotion so when i think of self-love i think of it as trying to be the most honest with myself and that is going to include going through my literal traumas in life and pushing through that almost like personal hell to get to the better position in life and that's what i really think self-love is and bettering yourself is dealing with those things it's breaking the cycles of trauma and your families. All right, and then you guys know that I'm a Christian. I mean, I'm sitting here reading my Bible. This is no secret, but if you wanna bring God into this picture, which I think we should always bring God into the picture, I think true self-love is when you are willing to sacrifice those things that you really desire because you know that God has a better plan for you. It's literally surrendering your life to God. This is a day-to-day -day thing. And another way to think less about yourself 
is to think more about God. And of course, we always want to become more like Jesus. But if you stop thinking, me, 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 what can I do? What do I want? And you just think, how can I glorify God? How can I follow God's will better? Then you're actually going to end up having a lot of self-love for yourself. I just finished reading my Bible for today. And I want to share a verse with you guys. I kind of want to start doing this every day, put a little verse in my videos. The last verse of chapter 16, John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. And I just love that verse because it's like you can find peace in Jesus. And just because you're following Jesus doesn't mean that there aren't going to be trials or hardships in this world. You will have suffering in this world. But Jesus has already won. He already has the victory. He's already conquered the world. So we can find peace in him. Next step in my self-care routine. And we are in the bathroom because we are going to take a nice relaxing long shower slash bath. So since I have my Olaplex in, I'm gonna get in and wash that out. Then I'm gonna put in a deep conditioner and I'm kind of gonna take a bath and read while I let that sit for like 10 or 15 minutes. Then I'll wash that out and get out. I'm so excited for this. So I've been reading this book called Boundaries. I've almost finished it and I could not recommend it enough. It's about boundaries, biblically based boundaries. If you want to talk about real self-love and self-care, the best thing you can do for yourself is set boundaries with other people and with yourself. How to do those hard things, how to deal with manipulators. This book has helped me a lot because I thought to be like this kind, selfless, Christ-like person, I had to just do what everyone around me wanted. And then I realized that is not how this works because the the less boundaries you have, it actually harms everyone around you. It doesn't push other people to better themselves because they can just use you and manipulate you and you're just always there. And it doesn't help you become better yourself. It doesn't help you grow your relationship with God. And a lot of life problems, relationship problems, financial problems, you name it, can be boiled down to a simple boundary issue. I used to never be able to set boundaries, especially with family members. And now I'm to the point where I can literally just be like, no. I don't want to do that and I don't even have to give a reason because it's my boundary and that's what I'm saying. This is my like post shower routine. I went ahead and put on clothes for the video of course but I like to use this little towel thing. This one's called the Turby Twist and I just flip my head over and twist it up. I actually already did this but I'll kind of just squeeze out all the excess water. While I have that in I will be moisturizing and then for my hair of course I got to finish out the Olaplex system. So here I have Olaplex 6, the bond smoothener, and Olaplex 7, the bonding oil. I'll mix them together. I'm literally getting like the scraps out. Love this together and just put that throughout my hair. Now I can't wait to go get the color touched up. That's pretty much my post shower routine. I put on a little bit of makeup and then literally my favorite outfit ever is just gonna be a hoodie oversized with Nike shorts. I got this new hoodie, link in the description. I have an affiliate link. I love having a clean room and I took today to do some laundry so I'm just gonna put away all of my clothes. And while I do that, I'm gonna jam out to some worship music. Play my worship playlist. Okay, playing your Spotify playlist called Worship Latin Cross. To finish up my boundaries talk, I used to be someone who literally felt like I was living for every single person around me. Like literally everything I did in life was just for someone else to make everyone else comfortable and it made me extremely anxious depressed hated myself you name it i felt absolutely terrible setting boundaries with myself and with other people has made me realize that i am living for me now it's not about other people but it's about me my relationship with god and people that i choose to be in my life I just got back from a thing at church. I ate some dinner. I'm getting into bed super early tonight. It's literally nine o'clock, but I thought, you know, I'm doing a little self-care night. So I thought it would be a nice, cozy, slow night to kind of turn my phone off for the night. I actually have a little glass of wine because I can, and I'm gonna keep reading my book, and then I might do just a little bit of editing, kind of finishing up tomorrow's video, but I don't know, kind of feeling like book vibes. Just all cozy. Wow, I was really thirsty. Hey Google, play reading music? Sure, here's a Spotify playlist called Reading Soundtrack. I'm gonna take off my watch too. 
So I'm just gonna kind of wind down for the night and read a little bit of my book. I actually did get back on my phone because I was like, ooh, I can like clear out my phone and set my alarm and everything. So then I actually don't have to be on my phone for the rest of the night. Some other great advice I can give you for self-care and self-love is of course setting boundaries and being consistent. The more you can follow through on promises that you make with yourself, the better. So it's always best to start with a few things at a time and a schedule that you can actually stay consistent with rather than try to do a lot and do it every single day and then you fall short and then you're disappointed in yourself and then you get stuck in that cycle. So I hope I conveyed what I was really trying to say in this video and that is just that I don't believe in this like Instagram worthy self-care self-love routine slash thing. Once again I find this to be more of a relaxed day than a self-care day and self-care self-love are so much deeper about those inner emotions about becoming your best self helping people around you not focusing physical or materialistic things about yourself or other people i love you guys so much and i want you to go down a self-improvement journey like i have been doing and so in all of my videos like this i just want to keep leaving tips that i learned from books or other people or whatever I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was really long, but I had a good time. I'm gonna go to bed and good night. See you in the next one.